Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. The Smith family's Massey Harris 80 Special is one of the most iconic machines of the 1950s. During that period, more than one million combines were in use on American farms, and the self-propelled 80 Series was the sales leader in the Midwest. Nick Smith of Iowa found this 1956 version online and knew right away he had to add it to his collection. Everybody's got tractors. Um, when this one come up on Craigslist, I thought, you know what, something new to the collection, probably catch a lot of eyes. A lot of people probably don't, haven't seen them uh, or heard of them. I'm the third owner. Uh, the first owner owned it from brand new till about 1985, 86. And then the second owner owned it after that. He bought it particularly to buy, uh, combine oats. Yeah, I think he, if I remember right, he had about 10 or 15 acres of oats he did every year. And then he'd clean it up, wax it up, and park it for the year. I don't think it's really seen that much rain. Luckily, they owned a shed. Um, sheds are key to keeping things looking original and still an operational. I hope I'm the last owner besides my kids. I'm gonna keep it in the shed to make it keep it pretty. Um, it's due for another wax job, of course. The Massey Harris 80 came with either a 10, 12, or 14 foot header, which offered a much wider cut than the competing combines of the day. With a lower center of gravity and the back wheels close together, the 80 Special resembles an early version of a zero turn machine. It was powered by a P30 six-cylinder Chrysler industrial engine, which sits above the main axle. It's got power. Uh, when we were combining wheat down at Albert City, we had one morning that it got pretty dewy out, but still wanted to put on a show for the crowd. I was surprised how much snort it has. I mean, it was making it work, but it worked right through it on 11-foot cutting bar. I'd say the thing that stands out to me is the variable speed it has and the gauge that it has. It, it rolls up there nice and smooth and back as you push forward on the hydro or back. The biggest thing is, is all the controls are right there. You don't have to reach for them. The outside is your speed, ground speed. Your next one over is your header height. And I get those two backwards just because the old combines, the header height is on the outside the old 7720s and some of the other ones I've ran. Uh, the nice part is the disengage, the separator, it's all right there on the side console. The unloading auger lever is all right there and it doesn't take too much effort to disengage and engage it. One other detail that made the 80 so popular was the offset cab, which was different than other brands who had the cab in the middle over the feeder house. However, that open cab design can make for some dusty, dirty work for the driver. I had a couple days uh, last year, the wind was in the wrong direction, and you were pretty dark after you got done, a lot of dust. Unfortunately, you know, we were only running it probably for an hour, and you could tell you had a scratchy throat, and probably a dust mask would have been the best thing, but you got to tough it out in front of everybody. When Nick takes the 80 Special to shows, some people are surprised to find that this combine can still put in a good day's work. It's a head turner. Guys, uh, oh, by golly, I can't believe that thing still runs. Yeah, and by golly, it's 63 years old. So, not many 63 year olds still run. A lot of them figure it's probably just a drive around type of machine like a tractor, um, but this one actually works and does everything you want it to out in the field. We actually are talking about combining, it's about an acre of beans. My dad puts some beans in a grove where the sweet corn used to be. And this fall, of course, our 35 foot head won't fit in there and this will, so we'll probably end up combining it. I don't know how we're actually gonna get it unloaded because I have nothing short to dump into. Everything's drain carts and semis, so. We'll figure something out. This machine was made during a confusing time where Massey Harris was merged with the Ferguson Company. For several years, some machines were distributed under the brand of both companies. 
In the late 50s, that's when Massey Harris was kind of starting to combine with Massey Ferguson. This tag actually says Massey Her Harris and Massey Ferguson on it. So this was right at the switchover when everybody was starting to combine and make Massey Ferguson. Nick's first real interest in classic tractors came when his grandpa talked him into taking his old Massey Harris 44 to tractor poles. So when I was a sophomore in high school, my grandpa Bob says, hey, I got this tractor sitting in the shed, been there 20 years. You ought to get that out and run it, get it running. And then once we get it running, you need to start tractor pulling. Okay. So unfortunately, um, my grandpa's the reason I started all this. From polling, Nick moved into collecting, where Massey Harris has been his primary brand of choice over the years. Massey Harris, it's, it's kind of a fun, fun one to collect because there's not many of them and when you do see them you know I take interest in them because there's not many of those left and there wasn't that many production ones made so I'd say Massey Harris is probably my my go-to. Lucky for Nick his wife Angie supports his interest in the hobby and it appears sons Grant and Bryson have caught the classic tractor bug as well. Yeah, they got the fever, and I wish they probably wouldn't have got it. They'd probably have more money in their pocket, but they wouldn't have as much fun. It makes a good family bonding. It's real nice. Uh, the biggest thing is, is, as long as they take interest in it, I'll probably keep my interest in it. It's funny how it started, you know, 25 years ago and kind of grown ever since.